uh, you know, that is, that is not widespread. Uh, here's just an example, but at Sandia National Laboratory, they have uh, a very famous red team that has lots of uh, uh, successful compromises. And, and I thought it worthwhile to put the, uh, the quote from a former chief there. Um, you know, our general Methodist asks, asks system owners, what's your worst nightmare? And then our goal is to make that happen. And of course at Sandia Labs, of course, they would have the, the, um, the engineers uh, and the wherewithal to pull together this nation state style full scope attack that you just normally would not see uh, on the internet. And this is a kind of thing that, 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 that is a whole other level that is likely in these ongoing negotiations between US and Russia in particular today. You know, how do you manage these, these kind of things? Uh, so let's look a little bit at CDX history and how we got to today. Um, you know, cyber defenders, they may or not be warned. Uh, when these things uh, come their way. Uh, a good case in point was uh, eligible receiver in 1997, in which case the NSA played the role of North Korean hackers. Uh, and uh, an article about the event in Foreign Affairs was, was pretty good. Um, you know, but the thing is, is if you have a number of guys working on this and they've got a smart plan and they attack at various levels, you can imagine how much confusion they could create, especially if they owned all the email servers in question. Uh, because it would go to the question of prior reconnaissance, and you know that you know the general talks to the colonel, the colonel talks to the captain, talks to the private, etc. On down, and if you can insert yourself in there, uh, you know all of a sudden you know you could have these guys telling each other to go, everybody go play golf, take the day off that day. So uh, here's another example, just about how different these kinds of things are. But the EPA in 2006 was curious if the water supply could be poisoned. And so Sandia looked at that. And one of the first things they found was that there were just way too many facilities to look at. And so you had to come up with kind of a, 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 a programmatic uh, um, angle to take to pass out uh, the information to all relevant parties. Um, a current trend is international uh, CDXs. Uh, this this, um, uh, this is on the rise quickly, and this is one of the specific things we really want to do in, in Estonia. Not surprisingly, at the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, the whole point is to get uh, international institutions on the same page. And I was real lucky to be the first one assigned uh, from internationally to the Cyber Center of Excellence in uh, 2007, and now uh, we're at nine countries. I just read in the news last week we got Hungary on board, so that's uh, that's uh, nine countries, including the uh, Italy, Spain, Germany, and a bunch of uh, other countries as well. Uh, so I think within 10 years, in the, from the NATO angle, all 30 or so, I think there's 28 now, uh, countries will be part of the center. And so it'd be, it could be quite a hub for, I think, uh, a cyber defense in the future. Uh, however, so you can see them growing in sophistication. 2006, we looked at hacktivists. In 2008, uh, it was about a nation state actor. And then already in 2009, you see a CDX's stage in places like uh, T Tajikistan, which I'm sure uh, was new for them. So Baltic Cyber Shield, that's, uh, that's the name of our exercise. Uh, we had uh, seven uh, countries, uh, six national blue teams, and we had a 20-person international uh, red team. And for what it's worth, uh, the, the red team was we had to buy them you know, some hotel rooms and I think beer and cake and stuff. But uh, we had one proposal that came from a large contractor to supply the red team, just to give some perspective. Uh, and the price was $500,000 to provide a red team. Uh, and so uh, uh, we got by on far, far less uh, than that, and, and they were quite good, actually. And it, it goes to, I think, another area, uh, and I think DEF CON is the perfect place to talk about this, but, you know, it's, a, it's an area in which you need passion. You need passion more than you need money, really. And, and, and DEF CON really is all about that, because you can see you know, people come here uh, because they want to be here. So the Baltic Cyber Shield uh, is a live fire CDX. It's really cool, because I've been to some in the past, some DOD things, frankly, uh, that were all, you know, these guys sitting around a table, and, and somebody passes you a note. And that note says, you are under massive cyber attack. What do you do? You know, and of course, it's a Navy SEAL or something. He says, OK, well, you know, who do I kill? And the, the neat thing about Baltic Cyber Shield is, is that it was none of that, really. It was just all, let's build the infrastructure uh, and let's let uh, the red team attack the blue teams and see what the blue teams do. Uh, and so that's really cool. 
Uh, so here are some of the inspirations for it. And there was a small event in 2008 uh, in which, uh, but it was much, much smaller. There's really some students from Sweden, some students from Estonia got together over, over a weekend and, and sauna and beer. Sauna is a big deal in Estonia if, you, if you're not uh, uh, familiar with the, the fin Finland and uh, uh, Estonian culture. And so uh, a lot of our meetings, they go into the evening and we have uh, dinner and then literally everybody is, is naked. And it's uh, uh, it's uh, one of the things about it is is uh, it, we call it meeting room three, but it, it is a, a place where you know you you don't bring any hardware or software or or clothing, and so it's I guess in the end it facilitates a conversation, especially after all the uh, vodka that's provided. Uh, so the scenario, uh, so I'm on the white team, so scenario is important to me, but we wanted to explore the, the uh, question of cyber uh, terrorism. Uh, in particular, we wanted to look at this uh, SCADA issue. So the blue teams uh, were going to be kind of a higher gun rapid reaction team that shows up when uh, there was a, a sort of a, a computer security audit and failure at a company. There was volatile geopolitical tensions. Uh, there was a, a threat uh, against these uh, companies that had uh, dirty energy. And there was even a fear that there were some insiders on the network. So the company had decided to wholesale get rid of their uh, staff and bring in this team. Uh, the blue team is definitely, we decided, is, is the goal uh, for this year, you know, to, to, uh, to teach and to train. Uh, but two other, uh, two other goals as well. One, we really wanted as much international participation as possible, which if you're interested in next year's event, you can get in touch with me. It's fairly easy through ccdcoe.org or the Cyber Defense Center of Excellence website. Uh, but we'll start that almost immediately for next year. Uh, and Estonia is a lovely place to visit in June. Uh, and then finally, we wanted to say how many things that we could we come up with uh, for future CDXs, not only for our center, but for the world, really, uh, and in terms of lessons learned and, and, uh, and how to do it better uh, in the future. Uh, so on the white team, we had to come up with scoring criteria. And so this is always a lot of interest because, as you'll see in the captured flag uh, um, room here, you know, the scoring board is what everybody's really interested in, who's winning and who's losing. Uh, so the, the positive points for blue team, uh, these are thwarted attacks and innovative strategies and tactics, but a, a crucial element, if you're not familiar with it, are these business requests. So not only are you under massive cyber attack, but somebody hands you a note which says you need to, uh, you know, the, the CEO of your company is in another country and he needs immediately or she needs immediate access to a sort of internal, uh, you know, file server because they need to give a presentation, right? So these are business requests that not only do you have to fend off the attacks, but you have to sort of keep your company running at the same time. Uh, and so the negative points, that's pretty clear. We'll, we'll talk about how to lose points. Here's the green team, they're based in, uh, in Sweden. Um, so uh, one of the key things is these uh, miniature factories. So we had this steel table, and I'll show you a picture of it. We had these small factories on the table uh, that represented sort of the, the, the grand prizes in Baltic Cyber Shield 2010. Uh, and we actually uh, put this butane flame on the back that if the hackers could figure out, they could blow up the factory. The blue teams, uh, they all had identical uh, infrastructure. They weren't allowed to log in to their network until the, uh, the day of, and that simulated the rapid reaction team uh, style approach uh, that we had. Um, uh, the, the network was fairly insecure, uh, and as you can see, there are four VLAN segments. I'll show you those. Uh, here's some of the, the, the specs on the, the game environment. Uh, so you can see that, but if you're interested, you can check that out later or ask me about it. Here's the, here's the network, so there was internal uh, DMZ, HMI, and PLC, which connect the program uh, logic controller that, that was uh, connected to the remote factory. Uh, our SCADA, here are some of the specs on that. Um, there's a human machine interface, which was Simplicity Software. Uh, GE PLCs. Here are the factories. Uh, so there were two each uh, per blue team. And uh, when I visited Sweden before the exercise, um, and it was this is such a big event, so I'll just tell you, you know, the bits and pieces that I was able to, to learn. But you know, there was a group of us there, you know, trying to 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 uh, query the the green team on on everything they did, and somebody kind of mentioned, well, these are these are toys or these are models or something, and he said these are absolutely not. 
He said, from our perspective, we tried to design this scenario as accurately as possible, and, and this hardware and software is in use today for SCADA systems. Uh, so here's a model steam engine that was also there. Uh, I understand that they had a little solar plant. I wasn't able to see that, uh, that was also connected uh, to, the, to the system. Uh, here's the GEPLC. Uh, the blue teams, when they logged onto the network, they were certainly allowed uh, to harden the network. They had a you know, minimum uh, number of applications and services, of course, that they had to, uh, to provide on the network. And, and just FYI, this is really difficult, and I'll get to this uh, shortly, but the, the white team really needs to have enough people so that they can um, see and understand everything that's going on in the CDX, because it's not easy, really. All the things that the red team is doing, all the things that the blue team is doing, the white team, which tends to be comprised of people like me or analysts or, you know, kind of government people, they're, they're just not tech enough to understand everything that's happening. Uh, and so uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but they're definitely allowed to install and modify existing software once they, uh, once they log in. Uh, so the red team, we had uh, 20 people on the team, and they're angry environmentalists, uh, and they, they're going to, to uh, try to shut down these power companies and force them into greener energy. Uh, so internally there were four sub-teams, uh, you can see those. Uh, we allowed them uh, three weeks uh, for prior uh, reconnaissance and a place. Uh, and to do some hacking uh, and leave a couple of back doors to simulate uh, some insider activity beforehand. Uh, there was good visualization for the white team in, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, exercise. So you could see the topography, you could see the chat channels, uh, and a cool terrestrial map of the world. There was a lot of work that went into this uh, uh, effort. And so while we were all in Northern uh, Europe, we actually used uh, the Southern Hemisphere for the game. And we had you know, two of the blue teams were in South America, two in Africa, and two in Southeast Asia. And then the red team was in Iceland. Uh, here's part of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, visualization that we had. Um, here's, a, here's a closer look so you can see the, the connectivity that, it, that exists uh, between the, uh, uh, the, the attackers and the defenders uh, and also the, the endpoints, the, the factories. Uh, here is uh, the Cyber Center of Excellence. If you come for a visit, you're all uh, invited and, and welcome. We have a number of big events a year now. Uh, we just uh, had a conference a couple weeks ago, and we had uh, Bruce Schneier and Melissa Hathaway and a bunch of others who were, if Charlie Miller is here, he gave the talk of the, uh, of the uh, conference, uh, which was Kim Jong-il and me. Uh, so I highly encourage you to see that here. It's Charlie Miller's advice to uh, North Korea on how to build a uh, cyber attack army to take down the U.S. Uh, but we have a great uh, uh, infrastructure uh, in Estonia to work, to work with. Uh, the, R the Red Team campaign was divided into these four phases, and I'll go through those individually. Uh, initially, there was a declaration of war. So the first goal was to deface the public website of the, of the blue teams uh, and to threaten them with, uh, with action if they didn't take uh, some, some, uh, some greener uh, strategies toward energy provision. So in phase one, uh, the white team was allowed to compromise. They had some limits uh, the white team placed. And still, things moved so quickly that the, the, uh, the white team has trouble staying on top of everything. But the, but the red team largely accomplished these goals, which was in the first, so there was two days, essentially morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon. First morning was compromise one server in the DMZ and one in, in the internal. And it, was, uh, and it was still quite a hectic morning uh, because the blue teams came in to a fairly insecure network and are scrambling to understand the network and to, uh, uh, to find back doors and to, to prevent attacks. Phase two, the, the, the first afternoon, uh, so the red team was able to get over 40 uh, compromises. Um, and uh, uh, one uh, MySQL SCADA uh, report server. Um, one of the things we w wondered was, 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 was it, would it make it too easy for the red team? Uh, but it's really hard to know, and all of this we're still discussing uh, with the teams involved. I mean, it, it's like any class you go to. You know, if you go to a hacking class, there'll be, you know, a couple of people who, who they've already finished the exercise before it's even begun, a couple of people who can't even turn on their computer, and then, uh, you know, a wide range in the middle. Uh, and so, so it's hard to know exactly where to, where to teach. But we clearly also had that as well. There was one team, one blue team, that by far was the winner. And I'll show you what they did in a second. Uh, you know, but some that had just about zero points. 
And, and I went to this at Black Hat the other day. They had a, uh, this National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition uh, panel. Uh, and I asked, I was talking to the red team guys afterwards, and I said, what really